No bloco de notas de hoje, nós continuamos a série em parceria com a Escola de Verão em Química da UFSCar, que em 2020 chega à sua 40ª edição, em que nós entrevistamos os convidados internacionais do evento. Nossa convidada hoje é a professora Deborah Case, da University of Nottingham, no Reino Unido. Professor, thank you very much for being here with us. It's an honor. Oh, thank you very much. It's really it's an honor to be here, actually. You've received in 2018 the Chemistry of Transition Metals Award yeah. from the Royal Society of Chemistry. So to begin with, I would like you to tell us what's so special about transition metals that they even deserve a prize <laughs> of their own. Um, well, I guess the, the transition metals themselves, I mean, they appear in the middle of the periodic table. Um, I, guess, I guess what's so interesting and, and why it's, it's just such a broad chemistry with the transition metals. I mean, um, I'm an organometallic chemist, um, so that's, that's my area of interest. Um, but you can use transition metals. They, they bind so many or they make bonds to so many um, you know, atoms and elements um, that they have such a, such a varied chemistry. You can use them for um, in, in catalyzing chemical reactions, reacting with small molecules, um, things like magnetism, um, that's because they've got these uh, unpaired electrons often. Um, they, they can vary their, their, what we call their oxidation states. They can take part in kind of supramolecular molecules. Um, you can, as I said, you can oxidize them, you can reduce them. You just do so many things with them. I think that's why they've got such a, such a rich chemistry. They, they deserve their own award. <laughs> and there are a lot of, the, the, a lot of elements. Yeah, no? yeah, yeah. So there is a vari variety. Yeah, too. in the D block. And then actually from, from one end of the D block where they haven't got many D electrons to the other end of the D block where they've obviously got full D shells, as we would say, then, then that makes a huge, huge difference to the chemistry as well. So I think as you go across the transition metals, you can have such, such a huge variety of chemistry. And you've talked about catalysis, and here at the summer school, you will give a course and make a lecture about it. So yeah. I would like you now, I know it may sound very obvious, but uh, uh, probably not to our public, and at least not for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would like you to make a, an effort of explaining what is catalysis, and. Yeah. Uh, What's the role of catalysis in chemistry? Because I, I hear a lot about it, yeah. no? people talking that they, they are trying to, for example, to develop new catalysts, new materials, but uh, it's not clear to me, okay, catalysis, uh, I've learned it yeah. at school, but yeah. I can't uh, really see, I think, wh why is it so important and why is the role of catalysis in chemistry or in chemical process? Okay, so what, what catalysis does is it, it, it accelerates chemical reactions. Um, so some, sometimes reactions can be quite slow, so what we can do is we, make, we can make them faster. But, but catalysts themselves, I think, I think catalysis is involved in, in something like 90% of chemical production. So somewhere along the line of producing a new chemical, 90% of those new chemicals will need some catalytic step as they go. But only to make it faster or to it no, to no, happen? No, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, well, well, well reactions... Uh, so thermodynamically, um, if a reaction will go, it, it will go. But sometimes, kinetically, they can be very slow that, that they wouldn't go, if you yeah. like. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing is, is, is we are offering a different way of getting to the product okay. that allows it to happen. Mm -hmm. um, so so um, catalysis is used in, oh, kind of, well, as I said, 90% of the chemicals you use. Um, so, so things like making, um, so hydroformylation makes aldehydes, which you can use to make detergents um, and other things like that. Um, you can, uh, so CH activation chemistry is, is particularly interesting at the moment. So that's actually trying to make new molecules um, from kind of more simple starting materials, if you like. Um, cutting out steps of reactions is, is also important. So if we can make a catalyst to go straight from one thing, or one ca compound to the other compound, um, then we make cheaper chemicals for people to use as well. So it, it's absolutely, absolutely everywhere. So there have been, uh, over the last kind of decade, I guess, just over, no, too long now. Uh, over the next, the last 20 years, there have been at least two um, Nobel Prizes awarded to, to catalysis um, because um, of the usefulness of these reactions. If you look at the pharmaceutical industry, um, I mean, the, 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 these, these are compounds usually made in quite small amounts. But because they are such kind of complicated molecules, often we will use catalysis. For example, um, uh, the Nobel Prize for carbon-carbon coupling reactions, which was uh, within the last 10 years. Um, equally, from a, from a, for a catalyst, sometimes you can make um, one, how do I put it, one product over another product. 
So, for example, and this is important for, for enantioselective catalysis, for example. So, so compounds in biology can have, um, or in your body, for example, can often have two hands. Okay, we call them chiral molecules, and you can't superimpose them on each other, okay? Because your hands, you can't do that. Um, so maybe we want one chiral molecule over the other, because one, one hand will work in a drug, and the other hand actually might be not good for you in a drug. So, so actually to produce things very selectively, I think that's where catalysis really comes into, it, into its own. And I have the feeling, or I read a lot about, okay, they are, uh, they are searching that this research is looking for a new catalyst or a better catalyst. Mm. Why is, is it still necessary to develop new catalysts? Well, I, I, I think because, because what, we, what we do is, is, is we realize that, um, yeah, things like CH activation is, is still, well, it's been going a while now, but still a fairly new field, and new and new developments are, are coming all the time. So maybe we can activate or we can do catalysis with a particular kind of bond, for example, a CH bond, that we couldn't before. Okay? So they're always, I guess it's always baby steps, it's all some, always small steps, but, but these small steps actually can make big differences um, for the, the, chemistry, the compounds that we can make, and I guess things like saving industry money, which saves the consumer money, you know, things like that are actually really, really important. And, I, and, and the development of new catalysts, yeah, can give you new things that you, you'd, never, you'd never made before, basically. And uh, while I was preparing me, myself to this interview, I've read that you are looking after compounds able to affect chemical transformations which were never seen before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What studies are these and uh, of what transformations we are talking about? Okay, okay. so, so I mean, one, one, one which was particularly fun but was a lot of hard work um, was the, um, we've done some reactions with um, carbon monoxide and carbon monoxide the, the bond strength in carbon monoxide is the strongest bond known, that carbon-oxygen bond between the, yeah, in, in carbon monoxide. Um, so um, it's very, very hard to break. It's done heterogeneously a lot of the time in industry, okay, so they can do it um, on surfaces. But heterogeneous catalysis, it's, it's great heterogeneous catalysis, but it's, it's, it's not, often not selective. Um, what we can do is we can take our molecules, um, so our low coordinate complexes that we make, and we can actually break that carbon-oxygen bond um, and use it to actually make um, sort of square rings, so square molecules. Um, all, and the whole, all of the inside of that is formed from breaking this carbon-oxygen bond, which is really challenging. So I guess that's why I like doing it, is the challenge of um, yeah, doing stuff that's not easy, I guess. Yeah. Um, we can also do catalysis, so we can catalyze um, chemical reactions. And recently we made some, some new phosphenodicarboxamide um, from this kind of what we call the dye insertion. That's effectively what it was. But we can couple together um, these compounds called isocyanates, um, which are used in the, the making of, of polymers and things like that. And we can couple those together and put phosphenes on to make new a new family of compounds. Mm -hmm. And uh, here at the summer school, you will give a course about organometallic compasses. Yeah. And uh, it's, or there's applications. Yeah. What are they? And what are they good for? Okay, so organometallic complexes um, are compounds with metal carbon bonds. Um, that's, that's basically it. Um, they have certain rules which apply to them, which kind of normal coordination complexes don't have. Um, what are they? Um, what they're used for? Well, actually, so a lot of the the catalysts that you use in industry are these organometallic complexes. So things like um, I should have mentioned before, actually. So things like um, um, what we call olefin polymerization. So it's polymerizing alkenes, mm -hmm. and so the plastics in the cameras, <laughs> the plastics in the cameras you use probably are, 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 are polyalkenes um, made through um, this olefin polymerization chemistry, and particularly things like that, for example, and I talked about that in my course yesterday, um, things like that um, are made using these compounds with metal carbon bonds, these, early, these are early transition metals with carbon um, metal carbon bonds. And your lecture will be about uh, small molecules activation. My, yeah, my plenary will be about yeah. using um, these um, uh, low coordinate complexes. So I'll, I'll talk about catalysis and I'll talk about them in small molecule activation. So yeah, these low coordinate complexes um, that we make, um, the reason I like making them, I think I've said challenge already, is, is, is the challenge because they're incredibly reactive. Um, because they are such so low coordinate, we use Basically, what we use is we use bulky ligands, um, so that's bulky carbon groups, okay, and so we have one there, and we have one on the top, and the metal kind of sits in between, and it's kind of protected. So 
so it doesn't want to react with much. But that said, it, our compounds react with oxygen, so we have to keep them under an inert atmosphere. So that's usually argon gas or nitrogen gas. So there are challenges to, to, to making these compounds. But because they're so reactive, they can react with these small molecules, such as carbon monoxide. Um, we'd like to look at things like ca uh, carbon dioxide activation, because um, obviously that's useful um, for um, get, you know, get, turning carbon dioxide waste, for example, if you could do that, you know, into useful molecules, that kind of thing. Uh, but other, other small molecules you could think of would be things like um, dihydrogen, ammonia, um, things like that, and seeing how you can activate them and turn them into uh, other useful compounds. Okay, now I have one last question, which uh, I'm uh, asking your colleagues to, and that's uh, how have you first met science and uh, how have you turned to be a scientist? And also, what inspires? And you've talked about the challenge. Yeah. Uh, is that what challenges you through your work day? OK, um, so I'm going to sound like the biggest geek in the world. <laughs> um, so when I was about, I remember, I've got to be about nine, eight or nine years old, I don't know. Uh, when I was a child, uh, I was given an encyclopedia. And um, I spent, I shouldn't say this on, <laughs> I spent quite a lot of time uh, copying out the periodic table because um, I was fascinated. I don't know why, um, but, but, you know, the, the kind of whole order of the thing. And, but I remember in this, this book, so it was some sort of junior illustrated encyclopedia or something I think it was called. But inside the book, so they had two pages, only two pages on, on chemistry. They had the periodic table, which is what fascinated me. But they had a picture of a guy, um, it was all drawn, it was like a cartoon, a picture of a guy in kind of full sort of we call PPE, protective equipment, right? Because there was, a, there was, a, there was a, 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 a pipe with chlorine gas coming out of it. It's horrible, I mean, yellowish gas, really poisonous, right? You know, it kills people. Um, and then next to it was a picture of sodium in, a, um, in water, um, sort of fizzing away. Again, all drawn, it was all, you know, some of the paint had drawn this artistically. Um, and the fascinating thing was they had those and then they had a picture of table salt. And so you take, Chlorine, you take sodium, right? Horrible things by themselves. Sodium gives the chlorine an electron, it makes salt, and you put it, I'm British, you put it on your fish and chips, right? So yeah, that, that was crazy. And I, I just thought, that, that sounds like something I want to do. Maybe blowing things up as well. Um, but, um, but yeah, that, that's the kind of thing, that, that's what got me into it. I, I guess what, what, yeah, what, what, what kind of drives me? Um, I, 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 I don't know, it's, it's yeah. I'm going to sound like Star Trek now. It's a search for new things, I guess, uh, making these new compounds, kind of rise into these challenges, um, but also having a, a really great research group as well, you know, you know these, these enthusiastic students, and I really like to talk to them about the chemistry and, and, and see their enthusiasm too. Okay, thank you very much, Deborah. It's been a great pleasure. Thank you very much. Esse foi mais um bloco de notas. Quem se interessar pelo trabalho da professora Débora é só visitar o site do grupo de pesquisa. E a gente se vê no próximo bloco de notas. Música